Salam Jio watching News Click and 420 Grams. We're coming to you uh, with a story today that is actually most unfortunate. It's uh, it's not a great uh, bit of news that you want to read at any time. As uh, you know, if you follow Indian football, uh, the Women's Under-17 World Cup or the Under-17 World Cup for girls is being hosted by India in the coming months. It will be the first women's team from this country to play in any sort of World Cup finals tournament. That team is currently preparing for uh, for the upcoming tournament in Europe, you know, an exposure tour. And over the past three, four days, what has unfolded is a series of allegations of serious misconduct against the assistant coach of that team, Alex Ambrose, uh, who is one of, he's an ex-India international uh, men's footballer. He's uh, uh, studying for his pro license coach. One uh, coaching badge, one of the most uh, well-known faces in the small coaching circuit uh, in this country. Uh, immediately as a response to the news coming out, the All India Football Federation have called him back from the camp. He's, uh, I'm presuming, uh, back in India. We tried to reach out to Alex, but we, we were unable to. Uh, pending investigation, which will happen shortly, I'm, I'm assuming, because this is something that everyone has responded to and is taking extremely seriously. It is a case that that is quite sensitive because, of course, on top of everything else, it involves teenage girls uh, in a team environment that where the first priority is, has to be in each and every case to look after, safeguard their interests first, uh, as it should be with all national teams. Uh, it's a bit, uh, I think, shameful for us as well that it has taken us the bravery of these uh, teenagers who have come forward with these complaints to talk about the wider issues uh, that are uh, sort of troubling all of our national teams. Uh, there's been a series of incidents over the past few months that reflects a sort of uh, very careless attitude, uh, a very casual attitude towards how these teams are being managed, how the interests of players are <coughs> being looked after. And this is a team, uh, a women's team that Theoretically, we're looking at as potentially qualifying actually for a FIFA World Cup. Uh, so, it is also in many senses the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's going on in, in the overall system of uh, management of women's football in this country. Uh, whether it's how the league is organized at the state levels or at the national level, the kind of support that, uh, let's say, the men's game gets versus the women's game uh, gets, whether it's national teams or uh, club football or other structural things such as broadcasting, uh, even social media. Uh, joining uh, us on this discussion, conversation around some of these things are veteran journalists who have covered systemic issues in Indian sport collectively for perhaps the last half century or so. <laughs> uh, Jaydeep Basu is here and uh, Leslie Xavier is here. Uh, unfortunate, Alex is someone that uh, we have seen as a player, we know a little bit as a coach uh, and as a as a person. Uh, but without getting into the details of that case, because of various reasons, including that no investigation has gone on, how does this highlight sort of what has been happening in terms of the general management of these teams of whether it's young boys or young girls that we are so regularly sending out with trust and faith that, you know, whatever else happens, their safety and their health is looked after. Yeah, that is uh, that that is true. I think I thought uh, since it is the under seventeen team <coughs> and consists of all minor girls, <coughs> one should have been far more careful than uh, it is. See, this is something you know, no one can predict. No one can say what is going to happen. I completely understand. I agree with that. That uh, the 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 team management can always uh, turn around and say what? How did we know about all these things? That is true. But what is uh, what is quite uh, uh, what is unfortunate and what is alarming rather <coughs> that in, if you look in the uh, look, uh, look if you take out uh, the uh, the whatever controversies has happened in the last four or five months. Everything is involving the national team. That is something I wonder that why it has happened. So, so is there something uh, wrong with the uh, with the management of the national team or the people who are running the national team? They are not being able to able to manage things <coughs> in the way it should be. 
uh, one after one incident, if you see, this is the with the so women. If you go back and list them for us, uh, Jaydi, going back to perhaps even before the AFC Asian Cup for women that India hosted, in which that whole bio bubble breach happened, and as the host country, then we were forced to withdraw from a tournament where we had hopes of qualification from. Usse pehle bhi agar aap ja ke thoda timeline denge of some of these incidents of. Uh, See, the, uh, previously, if you look at look at the look at history of Indian football, then you might find innumerable incidents <laughs> that what has happened with the na national team yeah. because national team always used to be on the focus like it is today, mm. and so the, all, all this uh, 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 what you see mismanagement incident of mis incidents of mismanagement used to come out, but but now at the moment. When you have a full-fledged national team department where more than half a dozen people are working and uh, they are being well compensated by the feder federation, they are not, uh, they, and, and they, it's it's good. Profession. So, according to uh, All India Football Federation, professionals are working working there. Mm. Why it should happen? Mm. That is the thing. There are people for doing for ticketing. There are people for do for for looking after the travel. There are people for looking after the itinerary of the everything is mm. there. So why it is like that? See, breach of bio bubble is a is a was a huge issue actually. We have spoken about it previously also. Yeah. Now we are in this this show only here also. So, so from 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 flying them from uh, from Kerala to uh, Bombay, at that point of time, from there on, then on, things uh, started deteriorating. So I am not getting into it again because we have already spoken against it, mm. uh, about it rather. So after that, this see only last 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 month in June. That means that today is July one. So I'm talking about June middle. The women's team was going to Sweden, so they uh, they had a ticket for 19th and the visa for 20th, mm. and and the and the team had to wait at the airport or wherever for a day, and so much money was lost because because of another tick, ticketing fresh tick, tickets had to be done. And why should all these things happen? Why should all these things? This is too grave an incident. What you just spoke about, mm. but we, if you like, like you say, when India was playing in the in the Hong, at Hong against in the AFC qualifiers in Calcutta, mm. how many tickets will be issued? Whether twelve thousand or fifteen thousand and fifty, there was so much drama, <laughs> drama over it, which was which, and we we got to know that some people have said, oh, nobody will come to watch matches in Calcutta. So only twelve thousand you uh, print. Later on, we found fifty thousand is coming for every match. So why should and 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 the national team captain had to come out and appeal and saying that more tickets should be printed so that more people can come. Mm. So why should all these things happen? My question is: mm. previous incidents, okay, they were they were the 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 federation was small. They had they had they had they had uh, not much of money. Everything was done by the people, amateur people who are looking after things. But mm. now it is not like that. You have money. You have good department. You have staff strength. You have you have facilities. All the facilities needed for it. Then why should it happen? Somebody has to stand up and take responsibility for this. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And of course, I also have to say that uh, as you, it's not only the national team though that that is uh, sort of plagued by this issue. Even at the league levels, uh, very similar sort of things happen. I, I'm not aware really of the inside. Uh, Happenings of the FSDL operated league. I'm sure they are much different and far more. Uh, of course, well, they are well managed. Oh, they, of course, they but are. whether it's the I League or the uh, IWL, which we have seen from very close quarters, which you will be able to say because since you have yeah, watched all of them the for the last couple are, of years, are, are, yeah. it is uh, it's system wide, you know. At the IWL, for example, of course, okay, they, they you, you try as much as possible, but only in even the bio bubble itself, it was supposed to be a tournament technically that was held in a bio bubble, but it was a pretty farcical bio bubble. So <laughs> and t yeah, as was testing procedure, because I think the idea behind it is not to look at the best interests of the athletes in question. It is to say, if we are in the bio bubble, then there will not be press, no media coverage, no spectators. 
तो हम जैसे अपना टूर्नामेंट करना चाहते हैं हम कर सकते हैं किसी की नजरें नहीं पड़ेगी यहाँ पे सो यू एब्सोल्यूटली इट्स लाइक यू या वेल मैनेज ऑन पेपर तो न्यूज पेपर में तो फिर प्रेस रिलीज से ही छपेगा ना <laughs> कि इसने इतना गोल मारा रिजल्ट <laughs> ये था <laughs> और ये जीता इन द एंड सो विच डजेंट टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन एट ऑल ऑल ऑफ द एस्पेक्ट दैट एथलीट्स आर गोइंग थ्रू एंड एंड द प्रॉब्लम स्टिल रिमेन्स दैट दिस इज एज मच ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ मिसकॉन्डक्ट इज ऑल्सो अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ मिस यूज ऑफ पावर बिकॉज दीज पीपल कोचेज आर and for a decades you have covered it the relationships between athletes and coaches how irrespective of the kind of mental and physical torture a coach is inflicting on an athlete that coach is meant to still be considered you know the greatest gift and like equated with some kind of god like status and and all of those things uh, th- this is a very sensitive issue but also an issue where uh, the federation can come and say to that there was no way that we could know that such things will happen within the team because as far as they are concerned there it was a former player and he has been coaching and he has been with the team and things were things were going on so how will you screen that but for me that's not how the approach should be because we have seen these kind of problems coming out time and again not just in india, india of late actually and it's it's actually a welcome change that all these issues are coming up in various sport like for instance cycling last month just last month and before that across the world like in in the usa of uh, where where you have sports and the sports organization is much more systematic but still uh, issues came out in gymnastics of systemic systematic abuse by coaches of of young girls mm. so the only way out of this is to approach this in a very systematic structural way where you have valves where things can be blocked at a very nice and straight if at all of issues coming out you give the confidence to the young athletes uh, girls or even boys that coaches or the management or the person involved in this will not have a say in their life or careers that is the biggest threat that these that these athletes But how how do you do that that's that's exactly what i'm saying the whole thing is about power right because you this is not uh, you are a lot of the girls are coming from the most marginalized yeah. sections right from remote parts of the country uh, not great financial conditions uh, all of those things so this is the like only way to get out of a cycle of poverty essentially and the constant threat is that agar ye nahi karoge to team se nikal denge khelne ko nahi milega even with the league all of like we spoke to almost 20 or so players uh, who are participating in the IWL maybe even more at the end of the day their attitude as players is at least hame khelne ko mil raha hai you know at least we getting a chance to play good enough but ha huh. huh, so somehow organizers of tournaments and and federations etc have also taken on the same attitude ki khela to rahe hain yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's and like as if that that is some sort of favor that is being right, done yeah. benevolence ha huh, and and because so few actually and it's the sad part is this that like of the millions of children in our country we keep saying that we are one of the youngest populations in the world etc etc so few get a chance to play regularly that like to make a career is a secondary thing but even to get a chance to play you are willing to make all kinds of sacrifices i mean whether whether it's traveling thousands of kilometers away from your home and living with strangers and or all of these things that that these athletes uh, try and do so that threat that that danda that is always being wielded makes it so difficult for uh, for athletes to come out themselves and say this is look this is what's happening i mean today why are the three of us sitting and having this conversation without but uh, the presence of someone who has been through the system yeah. because even today there are gag orders Electance, also in place right there, senior senior team uh, national team players who are ca- also currently part of a national team camp they have been told not to speak on the subject uh, and fair enough okay an investigation needs to be carried out and there there doesn't Uh, that's not the point the point is if 
these players cannot even come out in support of a child who has gone through obviously a traumatic scenario, a traumatic situation where everyone gets caught up in what the result of it is or what, what will happen next and even we are talking here about systemic changes that need to happen. But some focus ha first has to be on that individual or those individuals who have gone through whatever they have gone through. Right. So, because we don't have, uh, like some, I think we received one message from a group of member associations of AIFF, which is the state association essentially. One of, uh, at least in this statement, one of the demands was to replace all male staff on all teams with with female staff of all all all, all staff, women's teams. Right now, that is a knee jerk reaction yeah. that doesn't again address any yeah, of the these core issues. issues. Core issues as yeah. well. So, no, but uh, uh, that is so only thing uh, the, the quality will be compromised. Could be compromised. It's not just uh, mm. no. I would disagree with that. It's not about the question of quality I mean, because we will have uh, good women coaches huh. to come out. We can't assume that women coaches would be lesser than. Uh, male, no, at some places, what do you mean to? So, help? but the problem here is that it doesn't inspire confidence either because that's not the that's not the solution. Like it's it's like we have, uh, I mean, uh, we are shutting out the problem and we are just doing something else of a gimmick, uh, mm. just to just to just to plug the hole. But mm. the hole is larger. Like if there is a gag order on senior players to talk out about this thing, talk out in whatever ways that they want. You are not saying that they have to. Uh, narrate the things that they went through as juniors or whatever, but they could at least speak out in support, saying that yeah, the, we we have trust in the federation that they would uh, they would they would do justice to the investigation and all that. So the problem here is not finding who is guilty and investigating it. That should be done at all. But the larger idea is that how do you get these people? And we are not, of course, the entire structure is flawed. There is problem right from the grassroots. Like for instance, we have had this discussion before that at the National Women's Football Championship, which was held in Kerala. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. the the stadium did did not have bathrooms or change rooms for the women mm. women women to change loose. into their kids and yeah. it's like loose were not there. Some portable loose were kept and then it became so dirty that it can't be used at all. So this and this is happening in in a state like Kerala where you would like to imagine that people have a larger civic sense on these matters. So, mm. uh, it never happened. So, again, the same thing. The organizers were thinking that we are organizing it. Like we are letting the women play. That's a big deal in itself. But the larger problem is, I mean, the larger thing here is that this has happened in the national team, which is a controlled environment, which, which can be a great environment if at all you choose to make it so. Mm. So, these girls in question, the under-17 team, they have been with the, with the, in the system since they're under 15 days. Mm. It's been a two, three year journey with the national team set up. In camps, camps were disbanded because of COVID-19 as well, but within that system, they were there. So, you nurture their psyche as well because you are not just building a group of girls to kick ball and score goals. We are also building individuals who are capable of giving, giving it a fight on the playing field and also become ambassadors of the game to a larger audience young girls as well as the society as examples saying that we, we are women f footballers and we are like for instance someone like a Megan Rapinoe coming from a different system but she still has to fight she still had to stand up they, they had to file a case for uh, equal pay so the fight is always there but where does she get that confidence maybe from the societal setup there and maybe also within the team dynamics or the federation dynamics there are things which give them confidence for that so what the AFF should be doing or the National Federation should be doing is that when you get these individuals or these young talented girls or boys into the system, you build them on all friends and also give them assurance with officers in place or uh, individuals. It can be in the, in the case of women's team, it can be a woman so that so the things are easier for them to talk out and all that and mm -hmm. ensure that Regardless of whoever it is, that confidence is given that you speak out, we will take cognizance and we will take action or we will ensure that this is investigated properly. That kind of confidence building will only happen if the federation itself changes its way of working and become transparent in its idea. Mm. Gag orders should be out of the question. You if, if it's a matter of indiscipline, if some irresponsible things have been spoken about, then you 
correct the individual. But as youngsters, you don't put a uh, gag on their mouths and then you expect them to learn and evolve and become responsible uh, individuals or players at a later stage. So that that kind of approach change should come in to address these matter, matters, try and weed out these matters. Of course, uh, a societal issue is there as far as these abuse, misuse things creeping up. That yeah, no, but that's why, that that is exactly why, because these things exist in wider society. I think uh, when, let's say, a national team comes to your home and uh, approaches your parents and says to you, Ki, we will take care of your child, we, will, we are taking them around, you know, you assume that because it is exactly the controlled environment that you said, that, yeah. that you are making a good decision, not the opposite. And so, I, and I, I guess also because the new constitution is is being thought of, drafted. Uh, actually, now it's probably beyond all of those stages. Yeah. But I think special, uh, maybe some things can be added because there are best practices, at least some kind of established practices, some kind of safeguards. Mm -hmm. None of the, uh, everything takes time because it, 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 it is it, always it take time. And yeah. The system has to be in place because the entire system is based on competition yeah. in the end, and like. Uh, any advantage in that competitive process, I guess, uh, is what athletes are forced to kind of more often than not. At least not take up. Otherwise, you you do end up losing your career and your prospects, and and that has in India massive impact on even then your family and the next generation. Uh, so, so these are not easy choices to make. So, I guess. Uh, it will be tough. It's it's a good thing. I, I think in, in the recent past, uh, about the last year or so, mm -hmm. the Players Association of India, which is the union that represents the interests of players. So, it's not part of the All India Football Federation. It's an external uh, union which you can sign up to and become a member of. Uh, mm -hmm. They are, have started to work with women players as well. Uh, they have uh, an ex-player, Anisha Chavan, who's heading uh, their... Uh, sort of women's department liaising with women players and all of that so th there are uh, i believe this uh, beginnings new, new of constitution has a has a players council provision yeah yeah which yeah, will be players which council, council also pro very provision important. provision yeah. is there and yeah. it will be elected uh, like like it has happened in cricket mm. they will be elected uh, players council so they have given anybody of india have played more than 15 matches they are they has to be members mm. <clears throat> in the last 20 years those who have played for india something i am not very really clear about it mm. i just read it but forgot it mm. so there is a provision for players council in the proposed constitution right. which is uh, going to the supreme court uh, if un, unless it is approved, it's not. It's not. Yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there is there is a provision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and and also then mm -hmm. take steps. I think uh, to tell players that they, these are the means by which yes, you know you so can that, address some. You can speak to someone basically. That, that knowledge and yeah. that uh, helps in a long way. Also, the other problem that I have I have felt in my experience in the system as well as as a journalist is that. Uh, how do you control the, I mean, see, for a federation who has employed a coach or a manager in a team setup, and if, if that manager or coach has a longish stint in that setup, he sort of, he or she sort of becomes the king of that fiefdom of that. So, and they, it's treated like that as well. So, I would control your future. I would control your career. So, the same thing happened in, I'm just digressing a little in the case of cycling and the case of abuse that uh, came out recently. The coach in question, R.K. Sharma, has been dismissed and uh, investigations are on. He allegedly called the uh, parents of the female cyclist to complain, saying that now you arrange for a wedding uh, because her career is done. She has nowhere to go in cycling anymore. So that's the and this is you're threat threatening the parents of the athlete so the kind of psychological trauma that the athlete herself being in the camp or being in the hotel room hotel where where this this man is roaming around it of course uh, it, it's that's how across the world sports systems work but across the world uh, federations have evolved itself trying to block these things in some way possible and mm -hmm. that uh, i mean it is 
tough because how do you control power because i mean wishful thinking in, in the federation itself because a new constitution maybe will help but you know in the past 10 years how top officials in the federation have been controlling the federation so that trickles down to at the barest local level also the district association president would be the king in his his country so uh, it's 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 if the problem is actually deep rooted and problem requires complete all of the system which is probably impossible uh, but yeah some changes should happen yeah yeah actually this is a kind of problem if you are talking about this under 17 women's girls women's team thing that problem is of course that it will happen it's happened before it will continue to because it's a it's it's such things do happen only thing is that how you control it if you have to bring it down to minimum that is that that is a very important thing and for that you have to be very careful while choosing the support staff especially for the minor girls i think you have uh, to be very careful about it uh, see even there will be slip up there is no doubt about it uh, mm. see you you can't read somebody's face or mind what's what is there uh, but uh, more tried and tested people should be allowed to uh, get into it, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is there. Probably. Mm. And, yeah. uh, and uh, probably a um, screening process that you guys yeah. look at yeah. larger. Uh, that's what I said. That's, that's, that's uh, the coaching credential. Uh, how to control. No, the idea, in fact, I, I, after I saw this press release, I spoke to a, a couple of uh, players who are currently in the system. And I think the response or the approach was we, we'll take the lesser of the two evils. Right. The, there will always be this power dynamic between the coach and, and the athlete because the coach's career is as linked to the athlete's career, uh, you know, as anything else and vice versa in, in some ways. So that power dynamic will always exist and there will always be some elements of corruption in the system where one coach will maybe say, I'll select you because you can give me some extra, some money or something else. But uh, if at least to a large extent having for the for a temporary uh, maybe period only women as support staff and as coaching staff then if that at least stops it from being like sexually predatory and getting into that territory then you know as players we'll take the lesser of the two evils in any case like you said the struggle that these athletes like everyone else has to go through is uh, r real and it doesn't end so why should they also add the workplace? Mm. Uh, like the, the ILO even has recently adopted uh, occupational uh, safety and health as one of, you know, part of the workers' bill of rights. So governments now are mandated to ensure that, and you have to consider these not just g workers, but I mean, minor workers, like you yeah. said, and so therefore, especially important. So with all of this uh, coming together, I think it's a good time for some safeguards to definitely concretely be put into the system. And hopefully thanks to the uh, the bravery of these girls who have fi um, brought, brought up the issue, it will be, it will be heard and, and hopefully get the ball rolling at the very least. Um, we have uh, pretty much that I think wraps up uh, this episode of 420 Grams. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the meeting between Igor Stimash, the head coach of the national team, who is scheduled to be on the show tomorrow. Uh, at some point, we will confirm the time. I mean, be on the show as in, and we will probably record that and put it out a little bit later because we're not sure when exactly he'll be free and available and all of those things. Uh, but uh, Jaidwa, just to wrap up, a quick bit on what's happening with the contract. See, they were supposed to, I, I believe the coach was supposed to meet the, not meet, to have him talk over the, over the Zoom or whatever, mm -hmm. virtually to the COA. Mm -hmm. It must have been done, but what has happened, I have no idea. Unless the Federation people <coughs> gives a press release or whatever, somebody speaks out, we mm -hmm. know. But I think the, the, the extension should be done. Uh, and why not? Because even, even in this Ambrose case, he has been given an extension last month only. Mm -hmm. Or most of the staff has uh, support Benjamin. staff of national team has got extension Extensions. for one one year. Right. So why not uh, the national coach can be given? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. He I think he should be given. At this moment, I have I have a feeling, I am I am I have a feeling that there are some forces trying to scuttle scuttle his chances. I'm very <clears throat> I'm talk very open about it. Mm -hmm. I think because he has been talking too much, he must be hurting some vested interest somewhere. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to pull him down.
well i have no evidence of it but i have a feeling so you should rephrase the thing saying that scuttle the national team's chances because a coach who has been with the team for 2 years i i understand that there was lockdown and yeah, yeah, break yeah. and no real but i believe that he has tried these players he was mixing and matching combinations and all that and he has probably hit on a done nice something at least which, yeah. which 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 can probably see india do a hmm. better show at yeah, the yeah. asian cup so uh, at I the moment know. when finally things are looking like looking up yeah. Uh, yeah. looking like looking up i would say yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah. he should be if he if he if he if he is get disturbed or he is being then it would be very unfortunate i think he should be Uh, he should be given at least till yeah, the Asian the Cup tournament, he, uh, yeah, tournament. He should tournament. be there. Fair yeah. enough. I think we are all in agreement on 420 grams on on that issue, uh, and uh, we maybe have will have more clarity on it very soon with Ego Steam Match. Uh, with that, I bring this episode to a close. Thank you very much for joining in. Please do write in, send your comments, uh, subscribe, follow, share, all of that. Goodbye.